Hey guys, Mr. Shaw here coming at you with Evaluate Multivariable Expressions. The quick code for this skill is T56. Um, and this skill is a kind of the term that you usually hear for this is plug and chug. Um, there's a reason for this. Plug is basically what you do when you take the number that a variable is supposed to be and put it in place of that variable, and chug is when you calculate it. The steps for those are a little bit more detailed than that, but it's almost as simple as that. I'm going to show you the example because I know a lot of you have said you aren't able to see them on your phone, and they actually use a lot of the same words here. They use simplify instead of chug, but basically the concept is the same. When you evaluate an expression, you're usually going to have a couple of letters that represent numbers, and then they'll give you the values of those letters, those variables. So once they give you the values, all you need to do is replace every instance of that variable with whichever value that they say is equal to, and then you can simplify using the operations that are in place. So here in this example, I've got the variable y, and then subtracted from that is the variable z. According to the example, it tells me y is equal to 6. So I plug in y, 6 for y right here. And then it tells me that z is equal to 5, so I sub plug in 5 for z right here. Since they're being subtracted, I can take 6 minus 5, and my answer is 1. And it's as simple as that. All right, let's try a few examples together. So it tells me to evaluate the expression for p equals 3 and q equals 3. Since they're right next to each other, I know that when they're right next to each other like that, they're touching, that really means they're being multiplied together. So I can plug in 3 and 3, multiply 3 times 3, and my answer is 9. Evaluate for v equals 2, w equals 3. Once again, I've got two numbers being multiplied together because they're next to each other. So before I show you the answer, go ahead and solve it in your head. 2 times 3 gives me 6. Evaluate the expression for x equals 6 and y equals 3. This time I'm using subtraction. So here I can see x and then y. So I'll place in my 6 for my x, put it in its place. My 3 for my y, put it in its place. 6 minus 3 gives me 3. Now, so far, all of these are just single-digit numbers. And this is the kind of math that you have mastered a long time ago, probably in elementary school, basic addition, basic subtraction, multiplication, and division. It's really that simple. The only thing that you are doing on top of that is just putting the numbers in place of the letters so you can get familiar with what it means to actually plug in something for a variable. All right, h minus j h equals 9, j equals 4, so 9 minus 4 is 5. Easy peasy. Squeezy. m equals 4, n equals 2, so I've got a 4, I've got a 2, and I can take 4 minus 2, and I'm left with 2. All of these problems so far have been pretty similar to each other. There's just one operation and two numbers. I don't know if this skill is going to get any harder, but let's keep going. 7 for my b. Minus C, it tells me, is 4. So I'll take 7 minus 4, and I get 3. Another multiplication, because they're next to each other like this. And I'm evaluating for C is 6, and D is 2. So I take 6 times 2, and I get 12. This time, we have addition. It's not really any more difficult. We haven't seen one yet. C is equal to 6, and D is equal to 6. And so I take 6, and I take 6, and I get... 12. Aha! Something has changed. This time we've got some integers. We've got a negative 6 for f and then a positive 3 for g. What we need to do here is make sure we apply the rules for integers, which you've had a lot of uh, practice with already in class as well as some of you on IXL, but let's just make sure we can remember what to do. If I plug in the negative 6 where the f is and then minus a 3, I like to always turn my subtraction into addition when I'm dealing with integers and then just kind of make it that the opposite sign. So instead of writing it like this, where I have negative 6 minus 3, I would change this to an addition and then change this sign so that I've got, oh, that looks terrible. Let's make that one clear negative. Now I've got both of these negatives together. They're going to move us down the number line. Here's my 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. One way I can think about this is that if I'm subtracting 3, I'm just moving to the left on this number line. If I'm adding a negative 3, same thing. I'm going negative by 3 ticks. So negative 7, negative 8, 
and negative 9 is where I land. So let's go ahead and plug in a negative 9 as our answer and see if we got that one right. Cool. That's great. Oh, the letter N is being used here twice. It doesn't change anything other than that we have one extra operation. Mr. Headphones, Mr. Shaw's headphones just fell out, so here we go. So I've got M equals 3, N equals 5. It looks like the first thing I need to do is multiply these two, since in my order of operations, PEMDAS, multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction. So let me go ahead and do that first. I'm actually going to rewrite this here so that I make sure that I'm doing this the right way. It was M, N, minus N. Mr. Shaw's whiteboard is amazing. And then 3 is for M, and N equals 5. So I've got 3 times 5. <laughs> That's a great dot. And then I'm subtracting N again, which again is 5. So I multiply first, and I'm left with 15 minus 5. And then I subtract 15 minus 5, and my final answer is 10. Again, you could probably do this in your head, but doing it on paper helps make sure that you're following the correct order of operations so you don't make any mistakes. So I've got a final answer of 10, and it says it's terrific. We are so close to 80. Let's push through. Evaluate the expression for v equals 1 and w equals negative 9. I've got negatives, and I've got a number in here doesn't change anything about the process. You still plug in those other values first. So I'm going to start off with negative 2vw. All right. Negative 2vw, where v is 1 and w is negative 9. I love that v is 1 because there's so little I have to do with it. Since they're all next to each other, I know that I'm just multiplying. And so I have to remember my rules for multiplying integers when I have negative and positive numbers. Well, the first thing I know is that if I'm multiplying by 1, nothing changes. So then I just need to multiply negative 2 times negative 9. And when I'm multiplying a negative times another negative, I'm flipping that into a positive. And then I multiply the numbers, which is 2 times 9. And that leaves me with a positive 18. Let's see if I got that right. Hot diggity dog. Ooh, look at that metal. That's exciting. I'm so close. I think I can get to 80 on this next question. You can get to 80 on that many questions as well. It looks like 11, maybe 12, and I think you can knock this out. Good luck on this skill, and I will see you on the other side. Let us know if you have any questions.